Let's start off by looking at what makes great communication. I'm not talking about on camera at the moment. I'm just talking about when you're talking to somebody and it's engaging, it's easy to listen to, and there just seems to be some sort of rapport with that person. That would be a great thing to have as an on-screen communicator. So what is it and, and why do some people just seem to communicate naturally without even trying? Well, the first thing is you've got to know what you're talking about, especially in front of the camera, in front of an audience. If you're feeling awkward because you're struggling to find the right things to say, people are going to start feeling awkward for you. So preparation is absolutely key here. That's actually where the hard work is done for us on-screen presenters. The other thing I wanted to mention here is, let's go back to one of the original studies, a, a study done by a chap called Albert Murray-Abian. I always pronounce that wrong. <laughs> but um, he did this study back in the 60s, and what he was actually talking about was the underlining feeling or the meaning of the words you were saying. You know, it, it, when somebody says something sometimes and you think, I don't believe that, or they didn't really mean that. So, for example, I could say to you now, um, hello, it's great to see you. And you could say, okay, that looked pretty genuine. Or I could say, hello, it's great to see you. And that kind of looks totally the opposite. It doesn't look genuine at all. But the words are identical there. Absolutely identical. So that tone that I was using and the facial expressions that I was using was communicating the feel of those words. And that's very often what a new presenter forgets because they're focused so much on just getting words out in the right order that that underlining meaning is totally lost. And this is what Albert's model was talking about. 1968, he did a number actually, but for layman's terms, well, let's just keep it simple. He said that 7% of the meaning or the feeling of the words of what you're saying is the words themselves. So words you could just write down and give to somebody. The next part is 38%. That's the tonality, the speed, the rhythm, anything to do with your voice, 38% of that feel. And then of course, the biggest bit is what are we looking at? That visual side is 55%. It's so important that, you know, you're, you're in the right mood almost, or you're giving the right indications, you're not looking awkward, you're not looking away. There's lots of things that we're going to start covering that um, are to do with that visual side. But if you think about it, we've been watching people since the day we were born. So... If you're looking at somebody, sometimes you can see that they're about to cry. You can almost tell that they're about to laugh. You can certainly see if somebody is faking a smile. Now, this is what we've got to stay away from. This is what is called a cheesy presenter. And we've all seen them. They're still out there. People who are, they're, they're literally trying to convince you that they're in a certain mood, that they feel a certain way by manipulating the muscles in their face to try and project an emotion. So I'm going to test you now. If you have, have been um, looking into people's faces, like everybody else, I'm sure you have, um, you'll be able to recognise the difference between a fake smile and a genuine smile. So if, if I was to do that, that's kind of genuine because I'm sort of laughing at what I'm about to do. So that looked pretty genuine, I'd think. But if I was going to just manipulate facial muscles, it looks like this. And everybody can instantly tell that that's fake. That's a cheesy presenter. And in fact, you've got to be really careful of that because it's your first lie to your audience. It's, it's the first reason that they shouldn't trust you. Because if you're going to try and pull the wool over their eyes or fake a smile and lie to them about how you feel, then what else are you going to lie to me about? And that's the one feeling, that's the one thing that we mustn't get our audience thinking is, oh yeah, this isn't real, this isn't genuine, it's fake. They can see it a mile off. So you can't fake it. You have to convince just one person and that is you've got to convince yourself. We're going to come on to the, the finer details of performance in the next section. But to start with, just be aware that your 
your tones, your visual representation, and the, the words that you're saying, they've got to, in, in some way, align. They have to be all sending the same message to the audience. Our job, really, as a presenter, is to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand the messages. If they've got to work too hard, we're going to lose them. We're, this, is, this is the one thing we're up against, especially online, or even on television now. You know, we've got to try and re retain our audience. And if they've got to try and figure out what it is you mean, they'll only do that for so long before they're gone. So it's up to us to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand. Now, it could be information. If it's a training video, it could be entertainment. It could be a recipe. It could be anything. But if I've got to work too hard for it, I won't. You know, on YouTube, you've just got all those little icons down the side. Well, I'm away. I'm off. And online, my phone, uh, when I'm watching TV, I've got my phone in my hand. 50% of your audience have their phone in their hand when they're watching TV. You give them a reason to look at it and they'll take it. So we've got to maintain that easy to watch, that genuine way of talking, and at the same time, keeping it easy for people to understand what we're doing. And that's with variety of vocal delivery. That's reflecting what it is we're saying. So if I say, good to be here, I need to reflect that. If I'm talking about something awful, again, I need to reflect that in the way I say it. As mentioned earlier, a new presenter very often is just so concerned about getting the words out in the right order that they will literally just go into this monotone delivery as they, they're going like this and they're getting the words out in the right thing and then they go on to the next section and then they carry on talking for five minutes or so in, a, in this way as they carry... And people just turn off because you're literally asking your audience to cipher it, to go through all of that and pick out the important bits for themselves. And they don't want to. We want it on a plate. We want it easy. We're a little bit lazy these days as an audience. We want instant gratification. So that's up to you to make it easy. And you do that by changing your tone for a new message. It's called signposting. So if you were to go onto a new message, do something different. Do something different visually. Maybe it's that. Maybe your tone goes up. Maybe your tone goes down, depending on the subject matter. And the words as well can say something else. So it's easy to know that that is the next section. And also, with the words, what tends to happen when you're talking to a camera is there is this thing that I call camera fog. It's not like you're sat in front of somebody. So if I was talking to somebody in a coffee shop, I could, I don't have to do anything special. They can really just see me. That You know what it's like when you're really in front of somebody and you can, there's almost, you can feel them. If you get too close to somebody, they're like, whoa, get, get back. You're in my space. I'm just, just a vibe I'm getting from you. But that's all lost when you're talking to a camera. There's no vibe so much. It's just dampened down. So you need to replace that by really highlighting important bits with the tone. If it feels to you like you're overcooking it, your expression is exaggerated very subtly, very naturally, but it feels to you like you're just being too animated, it's probably right. It probably is. People tend to hold back. They hold back for fear of criticism. They hold back for fear that they get something wrong. Well, what is wrong? There's, there's nothing wrong. I mean, you're sat in front of somebody in a coffee shop, you're chatting to them, are you thinking about that then? Well, why do you do it in front of the camera? Well, people put themselves under a microscope and start to analyze every single thing that they do. One of the things people always say to me is, what do I do with my hands? Which is a weird question, because we never ask that in real life. Again, my coffee shop scenario, I've never asked, oh, uh, what do I do with my hands? So what do we do in front of the camera? We start to overanalyze everything. And we shouldn't. Generally, the answer to that is just do what you normally do. But we're going to come on to that in the technique section a little bit later on.